Hello and welcome to Ray Koopy Black Heart Sunday Detox. And I have a guest with me today. You would like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Julia. And today's episode, we're going to be talking about long distance relationships and the struggles it go through during the holiday season from the perspective of women. Next episode will be on men, but today it's going to be on women and we're going to focus on the trials and tribulations that us as women have to go through while dealing with long distance relationships. So, Julia... Tell me about your long distance relationship. I know, but do the guests know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've actually been married for 15 years, almost 15 years. She doesn't um, look it. <laughs> mm, and my husband's actually in the military. So, very often he is gone, and we've got to make things work while he's gone because eventually he's going to come home and. Got to keep it going. Exactly, exactly. So now, we have a lot of people who I know listen to the podcast that are in um, or starting to get into long distance relationships, and especially with military and stuff like that. So they don't know what they're really getting into. So that's why I wanted to take the time, especially with somebody I know who also has anxiety and also has depression and I know dealing with um, a long distance relationship, that's a lot of anxiety and a lot of insecurities mm -hmm. that put on us as women. So I wanted to create this episode today so we could focus on that and to have a little Q&A and see how you overcame it over the 15 years because you guys have been married for 15 years. Um, I know that I've done long distance relationships for a little while and I know communication is a big factor, but you've been doing it a lot longer. So that's why I brought you here and that's why I'm going to go ahead and ask you a couple things first things first your first time being away for long distance how did you deal with that well it was uh when he went to boot camp and I was still in high school because we're high school sweethearts and the only thing you can do there is write letters and I got a letter from him once a week that was it then eventually we had a baby and we were married and he was still in a different state, but it was, like you said, communication is the biggest thing. We spoke every day. We talked on the phone every single day. And this was, you know, before FaceTime and all the things. It was when MySpace was big. So we had to kind of manage with what we had. Okay, okay. So you definitely had to manage. So when you guys eventually... How long did it take you guys to actually move together after that first, you know, good space of not being around each other? Um, hmm, we got married at, hmm, May, <laughs> and then I didn't move up to Virginia with him until November, so seven months. And before that, we dated, you know, another year and a half prior without being together. Okay, so it took you guys, so ultimately the end game, once you guys got married, you knew that you wanted to go ahead and move and be there. So communication was definitely a big factor that went through. Did you have any trouble or any worries that he may have been talking to other people while he was up there and you were down in a different state? In a sense, yes, because I was 17 years old and all 17 year old little girls, you know, have that. What's he doing? I want to know what he's doing at every moment of every day. But, got to communicate and, hey, what's going on there? Or, what are you doing tonight? And my biggest thing has always been, so long as I know where you're at, or if you say you're going to call me at 8.30, call me at 8.30. If you don't call me, what the fuck you doing? That's my... <laughs> That's my thing. So what was the biggest um, the biggest hiccup during the time that you guys were not living together or when you guys were away from each other? What is the biggest like conflict that you guys have? Trying to figure out how to how to be a couple and not living together or not you know being so young and going from zero to 100 real quick. Okay. So, I mean, what kind of suggestions would you give anybody who's considering going into a long distance relationship? Definitely make sure that you trust the person that you're going into a relationship with because 
first and foremost, if you don't have trust, it's never going to work out, no matter how long you've been together. Um, and then, of course, communication. Even if it's a, hey, send me a text when you get a chance, you know, or let me know what's going on in your day or something. Keep it, keep the communication lines open so that nobody's worried about any trust issues or anything like that. Okay. So the biggest thing that I've always ended up putting into consideration is communication tends to be a lot harder when you're long distance. Do you feel like you need to communicate more because of the distance or do you feel like the same amount of communication as if they were just right up the street would suffice? I think a little tricky communication all the way around is, is it, um, but sometimes you got to remember, especially when they're not in the same state, they don't know, they, they miss their, their favorite restaurants. Hey, I went to your favorite spot, got a burger, you know, instead of just a, oh yeah, I went out and did this or that, you know, you got to keep it going. You got to try to include them into it a little yeah. bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing that I end up seeing be the case was, I know um, what I was doing research on when I got into a long distance relationship was you want to schedule time to communicate with your partner and you also have to respect the reason why you guys are separated. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people sit here and just think that because you and that person are in a long distance relationship that you guys are going to be long distance forever. But as long as you guys have a clear understanding at some point in time, our end goal is to meet here, then maybe a, a relationship is going to be suffice. I know that I have a couple people now who are younger. And I mean, like um, my work daughter, she is dating somebody who just graduated a school um, for the Marines. And she was, she's part of the reason I decided to do this. She has anxiety. She has depression and she's very like high strong. And I kept telling her, I'm like, you have to respect that, you know, this is what he decided to do. You guys just need to make time to communicate, even if it's, you know, sending each other snaps occasionally. You both got to put in the effort regardless of how busy both of you are, mm -hmm. um, which I feel like on our end as women, we're going to always put 110%. Now, on the aspect of, your spouse, has there ever been a moment where you felt like he wasn't balancing out the amount of effort you were putting in and how did you resolve it? Honestly, no. Um, with my husband, I've been very fortunate to be able to schedule that time. There's maybe been a time or two where he hasn't been able to call me when he said he was because he was working. And then when he gets a hold of me, Hey, sorry, I got caught up doing X, Y, Z. And I understand because I respect what he, you know, his time at work because he's his own person. He has a job to do. He has, you know, friends that he wants to hang out with as well. And that's important too, is his own individuality. You know, a lot of people get into relationships and they forget that your partner has to have their own individuality that you fell in love with them for that reason, which kind of goes back in that whole, you're being a part of their world, not trying to be the center of their world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people are having that misconception, especially with a long distance relationship. You guys are trying to function in the same universe together and you guys are deciding, okay, I want you to be a part of my universe, but I still got things I got to handle. I still got things. You still got things. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And as long as I feel like you have that compromise and you guys are doing what you need to do on both ends, then it's going to work out. But also it still, still takes a little bit of sacrifice. I think you have been fortunate because the fact of being your husband has came back up and said, Hey, I am so sorry. I got caught up in some cases. Some people don't say that they're sorry that they had things going on. And even if they did make that promise, it's just that common courtesy to give that extra level saying, hey, I know I made a promise to you to call you. Hey, I know normally I'm texting you, but I'm sorry I wasn't able to do it because I got caught up with work. Mm -hmm. That's still showing that line of communication. So I feel like as long as somebody can take from that little book, it'll be good. And I mean, like, I feel like with this particular podcast, especially seeing it from this prospect, well, the aspect of a female, 
then you can see how much we can appreciate it. Because not every female's that way. Some females will be like, oh, you didn't call me. Now I'm mad. I'll admit, <laughs> I have lost my shit. But after talking for five minutes and it's more of a listen bitch I'm not fucking ignoring you type moment it's a I had shit I had to do and him kind of smacked me back down to reality that I'm not the center of his world he is you know he's got his own shit to do and I'm like I give it a second I'm shit he's right I'm sorry my bad calm the fuck down <laughs> And just go with it, you know? So, I mean, like you said, he, we're not joining each other's world. Like, we're joining each other's worlds together. We're not trying to be the sun in someone else's yeah. world that they're at your every beck and call because a relation, any kind of relationship, long distance or not, is never going to work like that. It isn't. And the thing yeah. is, I think if, if as long, especially, I feel like the only difference between a long distance relationship and a relationship in front is the communication aspect is mainly because that's all you really have. Mm -hmm. You don't get to go on the dates. You don't get to do any of that other stuff. It's a matter of letting that person know like, Hey, I thought of you, even if it's a simple good morning text, that's all it really takes. And sometimes it, it could just be something like, Hey, I thought of you tonight. I know I haven't been able to reach out to you the rest of the day. It's just taking that little step to make that person feel like, Hey, look, I thought of you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take that much. Um, now, when it comes down to, you know, long distance relationships, especially dating with somebody with an anxiety or depression, it is a little bit more complicated because now, you know, we do have those those moments where we're thinking like, oh, he might be talking to someone else or she might be talking to someone else. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, they haven't talked to me all day. And then, you know, sometimes it does take that a little assertiveness like, hey, look, I was at work. I'm not ignoring you, but it's that, that reinforced bringing us back to reality. Mm. Um, and I feel like I felt that on a whole personal level. He's like, when he's like, hold on, wait a minute. I gotta, you know what? You're right. You're at work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my bad. Let me, let me, my bad. Sure. <laughs> I think it's just an anxiety thing. I think that's just something with, um, with, with people who have anxiety, we start second guessing ourselves and stuff like that. And, um, it, it, that's the reason why it's kind of good to have those little factors, especially when it comes to long distance relationship where they're like, Hey, I thought of you today. Hey, I know I've been busy at work, but just free. Don't freak out. I still love you. Mm -hmm. I thought about you. So what was your long, your first deployment dealing with that? You know, you said you moved in in like November. Mm -hmm. When was the first deployment after that? About a two within two years of me getting up there, but also before his deployment, he was gone for training, home for a little bit, gone for training, home. So it was a lot of back and forth before we even got to his deployment. So, so you had plenty of time to build yourselves spiritually, physically, emotionally together and bond yourselves together. So then you went from seeing him almost as much as possible to bam like now you got to be gone for a while mm -hmm. how did you deal with that it was rough especially having two young kids it was it was very hard trying to you know figure out how in the hell am I going to be able to do everything because having somebody there even though before he was kind of in and out and then he just vanished for seven months. You know, it was very overwhelming. Well, I mean, it's not... I think in a way with with the military, it's more or less that it's beneficial for you because at the end of the day, after you go through all the stuff that you're doing, even if he wasn't really there and he was kind of in and out, him being there for you at the end of the day was what was really helping you get through all of it. And then for him being gone for seven months, now you don't have anybody to de-stress and de, like, you know, calm down with because he was gone. And I know me and you, the reason why we click so much is because of our, our, you know, our mental illness and stuff like that. So I know 
me as a person, my first deployment, I literally spent most of my time with my family. Like, I don't think I was really at home during that time. I was either working or I was back home. Like, hi, Dad. So, chicken and spaghetti tonight? Okay, cool. Don't judge me. This is my life, my life story. But I could tell you, for me, it was my way of finding my distraction. And I know, like, with you, you had the kids, but I know it would have still been overwhelming. It would have still been like, you're here in a world by yourself. Even if at that time, you really wasn't by yourself, he was just on the other side of the world. Yeah. And you still, like, you brought up distractions. And there are a million different things you can do when your significant other is gone. And especially with the anxiety and the depression to sit around at home and just to mope and be sad and throw a pity party. You got to put your big girl panties on because that shit gets old real quick. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sitting at home just makes you even more depressed. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's kind of hard to sit here and especially if you have a very attentive partner and they can see that even like through text messages, something's not right. And they'll be like, Hey, how was your day? And you're just like, okay. Yeah. No, what's wrong? <laughs> yep. What happened? Tell me what happened in your day. Like, I liked that. And at the beginning of, like, my marriage, it was just like, even then, like, you can sense when something was wrong. And he would be like, hey, you okay? Like, you tell me you're okay, but what's going on? And I'm just like, eh. It's been real <laughs> rough. It's one I mean, of them fucking days. It's one of them days. <laughs> And then, like, you don't want them to stress out because, you know, they're on the other side of the world. And you're, in your mind, you're like, they're dealing with their own stuff. You don't want to add what's going on. Like, what I'm going through is not nearly as bad as yeah. what they're going through. So I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, having a long-distance relationship is not for the weak. No. And especially... For some odd reason, I keep getting attracted to people who are like states away or like long distance away. So that is not going to, it's, I, I don't like long distance relationships, but that seems to be like what attracts me because yeah. I'm attracted to people with up north mindset. So <laughs> it's just like, and then on top of everything else, I sit here and I tell them like, Hey, look, I have anxiety and depression. You're going to have to communicate with me a little bit more than what you think is okay. Whatever you think is okay. You need to do that a little bit more than mm -hmm. that. Just a bit more because you know you gotta calm my demons as well i'm already fighting them too for now i need you to calm them too so it's just like but for you i like for you it's a little different i know because like i said you have kids like with me i was in a city with nobody and um and then i met you and then that's how we met and I, like i feel as though like especially with a lot of these military spouses and stuff like that that don't have kids how do they get through it? Because a lot of them, it's real bad because when I first moved here, a lot of the places, like I went to a waxing facility. The first thing the lady was just <laughs> like, do not have sex for 48 hours. I'm like, my husband's on deployment. And they were like, yeah, you'd be surprised at how many other military spouses, husbands are on deployment mm. right now. And we still have have to tell them this and I'm like what is that supposed to mean and I found out that like a lot of military spouses or actually anybody in long distance relationships they have their own little thing outside of their marriages and that's not a good distraction no. and I feel like Maybe it's because it might be like, you know, the budding joke where like these guys marry these females to get out of the barracks and they're not really realizing that they're marrying these women or these women are just marrying for the benefits. But it's it's one of those things if you're going to take a long distance relationship serious, then you need to really have that understanding. Now, knock on wood, maybe those ladies have open relationships when yeah. their husbands are not there because you don't know what their situation may be. But... When it comes down to those long distance relationships, we have to make sure that as women, we have a line and understanding. And if we don't like something or we don't feel comfortable with something, we still have to talk to them as if they can make somewhat of a change. We don't want to make it seem like, yeah, even if they're far away, that we don't want to include them in what's going on. Because just because they're gone doesn't mean they're not with you. Exactly. And especially, and, and it's a little bit different 
with the guys in the military as opposed to just a regular long distance relationship because you can pick up a phone and hey I miss you what are you doing where's I can't do that I can call he ain't gonna answer it's gonna go straight to voicemail so then I've got to type out <clears throat> this long ass email and get it all out all at one shot and you know hope that within the next 24 hours he's gonna read it and be able to come back and communicate to me like I'm sorry honey it's okay like take your breaths do you do what you got to do I'm I'm here for you let me let me hear what you've got to say and let me take care of you even though I'm not right by your side yeah you know and that's important for everybody it is because I mean like even if you guys are in a universe together and you're dating each other the biggest thing is you have to realize that you guys are both falling on each other for support even if that person is not physically there you're still falling on them for support mm -hmm. and if you are not able to communicate to them when something's wrong are you really in a trusted relationship at that point i get that we try to hide from our significant others to help them but sometimes it's doing more damage mm -hmm. and i feel like at the end of the day like we have to be able to still have that line of communication as if they were still there like they can do something even if they can't really do anything but just listen yep and a lot of people don't realize that that's ultimately all you really have now when i first met you um we went through our first what was it nine month deployment mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't even remember. It was so long. It was, long. Um, it was a long deployment. And I know, I remember sitting there talking to a lot of all, all these other military spouses and stuff like that. And then, like, oh, the first, like, wives meeting, like, most of them were freaking out. Because, one, it was their first deployment. Me, on the other hand, I was just like, mm, I went to my dad's. <laughs> I hung out with these two crazy ones right here yeah and stuff like that and it was just like you guys made it super easy but then again my relationship started as a long distance relationship and ultimately we got together and then he had you know long then he had to go on deployment so I think for me the transition was a little bit different than some of these other people where they may have been living with them for a while or these are just girls that they just started dating and this is their first deployment they've ever had to deal with or whatever the case may be but I already kind of got into that headspace don't get me wrong my anxiety and depression got the best of me but that's the reason why I had a really good support group that was physically here but during you know deployment in my marriage I was still able to like hey you know I need your help I panicked what are we gonna do and it couldn't go to work. My panic attack was so bad. Oh, yeah, my tonsils removed. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. Like, he missed, like, so many um, different appointments and so many different things involving me. And I, I, I get that whole aspect of communication. But, again, it's it's a matter of even if the person is tired, you got to still make an effort to uphold that once-a-day communication. Mm -hmm. Or at least, like, hey, I know I was supposed to communicate with you yesterday, but I'm so sorry. Um, you know, what, what happened yesterday? And I mean, like what a lot of people don't realize is that when it comes down to those long distance relationship, it's going to be more of a physical, it's going to be less physical, more emotional mm -hmm. and spiritual. So you have to try to make that person feel like, you know, it's important. Like sometimes you may have to just, you know, FaceTime each other to watch a show together. Yeah. Or, you know, FaceTime each other to to read each other like a part of a book or try to watch a show together at the same time over the phone or even fall asleep on the phone. Like I that's how majority of like most of my long distance relationships were were like falling asleep on the phone because I suck at going to sleep by myself. Mm -hmm. It just happens. Like, huh, let's let me just call you. And it's different yeah it is different when you're in the military versus a regular long distance relationship is very different so you just have to find things that work best for you now the only thing is like I have to figure out for like not me but for a lot of the younger ones who are going into these kind of relationships where you know sex is now kind of a big role and factor like if 
for instance, my work daughter, her boyfriend is on deployment. She's sitting here talking about, man, I really, really need sex and this, that, and the other. I'm like, what are you going to do when he goes on, like, tours and he's gone for a year, two years? You still have to find ways to make it spicy. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to still find ways to connect. Now, what suggestion would you have for somebody with a long distance relationship where you're not getting sex as much. Now I can give you my suggestion. I would like to hear yours mm -hmm. first. <laughs> Definitely visit the toy store and go shopping because you're going to need all the tools. Um, most recently, we were talking online back and forth and having chat sex, you know, because... Sexting. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, they, they're horny. You're horny. And neither one of you are touching each other, so touch yourselves and talk to each other. You know, keep it fresh, send pictures, talk about it, do all the things, you know, use your toys, use your hands, use your imagination so that you can still have that, that sexual relationship going because people do have needs that they need do. to be fulfilled even when their significant other is gone. Yeah. And I mean, like, some people would even consider, you know, during that time while they're away, have an open relationship. I know for females, some females now, that seemed to be the thing where they're giving their significant others that free leeway. But then some guys take that sh shit overboard. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, well, I'm gone. I'm going to go do things. And then when they finally link back up, they still think that it's okay to communicate or continue on with that communication. And people don't realize that, like, with guys they are more emotionally attached physically than females are. Like, we can have sex and not be emotionally attached like we used to be. Like, that was the misconception. But now guys are that way, where they have sex and now they need to know the girl's lifestyle, how many kids they got, yeah. and what's going on. And that's not easy. So, I mean, ultimately, the way I look at it is this. For me, in a long-distance relationship, I would like for my partner to be happy like even if it means like I understand you have needs I may not go out and go do anything but if you do at least have the common courtesy to let me know and that's just it that just depends on if that's really the route you want to go mm -hmm. or and it depends on who the partner is now if it's a partner where I feel like you know I may need to worry about it then no I'm not going to give that option up but at the same time I know me, like I know that when it comes down to energy waves and everything else like that, if I'm exchanging energy with you and then I'm allowing you to go back to wherever you are and then you go screw around with another girl, now you don't collect her energy, now you coming back to me and then we screw around, now I got her energy and your energy and now we're just a whole ball of energy and I, <laughs> and I don't need all that on my life. So it just really depends and like for me, I'm one of those empaths so I feel way too much. So. I'd be like, no, nah, that's not an option. Like, I know for me, with the 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 person that I was invested in uh, recently, I basically was just like, you know, hey, um, we're talking. If you want to do something, I'm not gonna stop you from it because you're there. I'm here. Like, what good would that really do in any way, shape, or form? Like, hey, if you want to talk, we can talk. Um, but I'm needy like emotionally mm -hmm. like just give me what I need emotionally come talk to me once a day or just tell me I'm okay like just tell me you love me that's it <laughs> tell me I'm pretty and pat my hair <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it but I feel like as long as I got the spiritual and the emotional aspect the physical one I would have been fine with, without because ultimately that wasn't going to be the end goal. The end goal at some point was for us to actually be near and close to each other. And then when we did get near and close to each other, then the physical aspect. But for the time being, it was the, we have to build the spiritual, the emotional, mm -hmm. and the mental part. Because for me, I'm a mental person. I like mental stimulation. So, like you said, you want to kind of invest those times and make them feel like, hey, like I went to your favorite restaurant, like I thought of you. Yeah, And that right there is a mental thing where that person could feel like, oh, you thought of me. And then that also plays in that spiritual and that emotional. So the biggest thing that I could say is, yes, sexually, you know, have phone sex. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. When you when you need some, just 
yeah, yeah, I'm sitting here, I'm naked, you know, but just think, <laughs> just get it going. As long as you are thinking of their touch and it's genuine and that's the person you want to be with and ultimately talk about your end goals. Um, not just on the aspect of the military because the military, ultimately they're going to come back to you. That is the, the ultimate end goal for that sailor mm -hmm. or soldier is they want to get back to their house or they want to get back to their spouse. So a regular person who's in a relationship is when you guys are talking sit here and talk about what the end goal is talk about hey at some point me and you we need to get closer mm -hmm. like this i can deal with this for so long but we need to get closer i want to be able to see you every day um my biggest suggestion is if you are in a long distance relationship try to make time to visit each other you know make dates over the phone try to video chat watch a movie together over the phone mm -hmm. or even just video chat. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, recite poems to each other, read. Exactly. <laughs> anything, anything to make a connection so that you don't start drifting apart because the moment you start drifting apart, that's it. Yeah. And I feel like any relationship, if with, especially nowadays with females becoming more of the pants wearers and we tend to be the ones that are quick to be like, yeah, I'm done guys tend to tend to get more sensitive so like let a female sit here and start drifting now a guy gets upset so it has to be both sided it can't just be one sided when it comes down to making an effort mm. especially when it comes down to long distance relationships and um i i just suggest like a, a lot of the stuff like um cosmopolitan uh, when i was up here reading on that was they were the ones who basically made the major suggestion on respect that reason why there's a distance and make sure that you guys make time to talk about what your end goals is and um you know communicate 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 because that's all you really have i agree and i mean like you have to have an understanding and respect and sometimes you know you are going to have your arguments it's going to be a lot difficult it, having a long distance relationship is not going to be for the week and for us to have anxiety and depression and we've gone through them and had successful relationships <laughs> it's um it's it's it says a lot it says a lot about our characters so major thing that i can go ahead and say is communicate make sure you build a bond what suggestion would you have to anybody who wants to consider having any type of long distance relationship make sure that you're ready and that you know that they're not going to be able to give you 110% of their time. We're not in high school, sitting through class all together. Nobody has responsibilities. Like, everybody's busy. Get ready for it. Hold on to your hats because it's coming. If you really want to be with somebody, you're going to find a way to make it work. Oh, you're so <laughs> cute. Yes, but yes, you will make it work if you, especially when it comes along long distance. Typically, a woman knows if she wants to be with a person and she will stick it out through all the BS, including the distance. Now, it's just a matter of guys. So, we're going to actually talk to uh, one of my guy friends tomorrow about a long distance relationship and how he's making it work and how long he's been together now you guys have heard it from somebody who's been married for 15 years and had to deal with a ongoing you know close relationship to long distance relationship um the only thing is that i want to add on to this tidbit is when you guys do eventually come together Make sure that you don't just rush into it. Mm -hmm. Still pace yourself because a lot of people, once you finally do connect, then you rush it and then you blow up. And it's not a good thing. I've seen that happen. It's happened with me before. And I've seen it happen with other people. You still have to pace it. Mm -hmm. And just because the person's there, then you now you're trying to rush and make up for lost time. Still got to pace it. Yeah, It's not. <laughs> you've got to learn that person being physically being there all over like or at all you know you only know them over the phone or through letters or you knew them two years ago before they went off to college and people change and that's okay but you got to take it as it comes and relearn each other as you come back together so it's always about pacing in time mm -hmm. 
Time is very, very important. Same with the matching energy, because their energy level is going to be different. So now you got to kind of get back in the middle of it. So I get it. So thank you guys uh, again for tuning in to Reiku P. Blackheart's Sunday Detox. As you guys have heard from a woman's aspect, both me and Miss Julia here, we've talked about long distance relationships as well as how to make it work on the females aspect. So next week we will talk about guys and how they make it work in long distance, um, as well as give some insights from what some of you guys have said about how to make a long distance relationship work. And um, we'll go from there. So guys, remember to protect your energy and have a wonderful Sunday.